Hello everyone. Today we will share Selfie or Dream Booth node workflow in Fidgetal Plus interface. We recommend watching it once from the start to the end and then repeating everything step by step in your own pace following the video. Imagine mom's bag, your old fellow, or a niche artistic style you're passionate about. All these things, as well as you, can become an object capable of reproduction in an endless range of ways. Dream Booth is a neural network based on stable diffusion that allows us to reproduce a custom concept, which the original dataset is lack of. Basically, Dream Booth pipeline can be divided into three steps. Dataset preparation, training setup, and afterwards generation. In the first step, we prepare the photos of the object. In the second step, we define the parameters of the training. And in the end, we test the trained model within Stable Diffusion node. Dataset Preparation So here we have a bunch of nice selfies of Olga, our amazing product manager. However, they are not prepared now. Dream Booth works only with 512 by 512 pictures so I will crop every photo. I do it in Figma but you can use other common variants like Berm, Photoshop, or an inbuilt device tool. If you decide to skip this step, your images would be cropped automatically and you may lose some key elements of the image. While I'm busy with it, let's discuss do's and don'ts for photos. I make the first picture bigger to remove unneeded information and make important features like face and figure more visible. So if the original picture collects approximately one-sixth information of an object, cropped version mainly consists of the object appearance data. I decided to avoid these two photos as they have almost identical qualities with a couple I added. Excluding them, we have equally meaningful shots. In fact, the opposite may cause overweighting of these types of shots and after training generations so the composition and pose of the shots will repeat again and again. Another nice thing about this compilation is the diversity in frame size and poses. For example, we have two mid shots telling us the information about the proportions and hands. The face position in each photo is also varied but not too much. So we can see it from different angles but they are not dramatic and it provides us with a consistent vision of the character. What's more, there is a sweet spot between randomness and consistency, Alia has one hairstyle and no makeup face everywhere. At the same time, the background and wearing are changing from shot to shot. Although, she is wearing a red hat in one picture there are no gaudy accessories like sunglasses or big hats covering key features. Last but not least I like about provided photos is their lighting. It is pretty soft and even on all the portraits so we can clearly see the features. Try to avoid contrasting unusual lighting as it changes the look and may be red as an extra feature of the person. Probably, these are a bit less successful so I will slightly adjust the shadow's intensity for them. As a result, we have 10 photos instead of 12 maximum which is still a good number. I'd say that 5 is a very minimum. The format is not important. You can use both PNG and JPEG. Training Setup So once we finish with the first step, we can switch to the browser and log into the Fidgetal Plus account. Let's close the sidebar to have more board space. Then right-click and choose Import Files node. Now we can upload our files. In fact, there are two ways to do it. You can either press Choose Files, Ctrl A to select everything and click Upload, or drag and drop putting the cursor onto Choose Files button. The cool thing about the second method is the ability to select files more randomly. Now, I need to connect this node with Dream Booth. If I right-click again, I can see a list of abilities of the neural networks within our tool. I need to train, so I choose this variant, find Dream Booth, and click to create it. As you can see, there is also a nice brief instruction. For now, we can close it as we will follow my workflow, but actually you have answers to all of your questions here. Okay, and this was the first way to add Dream Booth. Another variant is to go to the left menu, scroll down and choose Dream Booth. So the node will appear on the canvas. 
and from now we just should connect every photo with our dream booth input. I also enjoy making nodes bigger to have more space. Because yeah, in this way it is not so comfortable to use. Okay, this is the time to clarify the parameters. Actually, the training process predicts extra images generation. These are called class images. Here we have a number of them and the description or prompt they will be based on. I'd love to decrease the quantity a little bit as 80 is still high but a bit more time saving. Class prompt. Well, it has to be as close to your data set as possible. You can type a photo of a woman. Very straight to the point. In contrast, you can be more specific. In our case, we have Alia. How we can describe her? Well, she is a beautiful 35 years old woman. Probably Alia is a bit younger, but neural networks usually produce much younger and idealized portraits. We can also see her face well, so I'm typing detailed facial features. In subject, I will type Fidgetal Olga, a person. As you can see, it is a unique name plus a neutral definition. In fact, that is what you'll add to the prompt afterwards to generate the subject in stable. Training steps determine the number of steps for the whole session. I feel that 1750 is giving pretty decent results. However, you can try fewer steps around 1200 to 1500. The values above 2000 may cause overtraining but it depends on many factors so you are free to play around with this stuff. Scale uncond effects on the class prompt closeness. If the number is low, the generated images are very similar to the original dataset. If the value is higher than 20, the images are over-contrasted and illegible. I'd say that 7 is a sweet spot so you can keep it. Class steps. Again, I feel that 65 is a quite fair number. You can have really nice results with 40 to 80 steps. More steps make a picture more accurate, but for class images it is fine. And there are also seeds. They are not important as they are equal and random. In other words, you can't predict which seed will work best in your case. Now we can finally launch our node and it will create our custom Fidgetal Olga model in about 30 minutes. Afterwards generation. Hey, we are finally on the last stage. I right-click to add a node and find Stable Diffusion in a Generate section. It was also possible to add the node through left panel menu. In fact, it is the most complex neural network in our tool with many creative possibilities and settings. We encourage you to discover instructions on our website Fidgetal Plus and check the templates in the left panel for the full awareness. Skip in painting and start image settings. You shouldn't be afraid of advanced settings. They are easy and crucial for the generation. Sampler is an algorithm which creates an image based on your prompt in a number of steps. There are many of them, but we provide you with only two, KLMS and DITIM. Usually, both works fine. However, I prefer DITIM as it is a little bit more stable. Ada works for DITIM only. So if you use KLMS, it is ignored. It varies from 0 to 1 and the default value is optimal. It is hard to define exactly what this does but pictures with high ETA value are well saturated and clear while low ETA parameter gives less vibrant and sharp images. We already met scale unconned parameter. So it is generally about the closeness of the picture to the original dataset. You can think about it as a frying degree. Values over 20 produce burnt picture and under 5 values give row outputs. The default is optimal. And finally basic parameters. Steps have been discussed as well. Let's increase them to 100 to make the images crispier. Seed is not important, it is random. We increase height to make the ratio portrait. Tiling is great for textures and panoramic landscapes, but now we don't really need it. 
you can have up to eight outcomes from one launch. Artistic mode is our method to generate more aesthetically pleasing outcomes for portraits and landscapes. So you can just tick this instead of a tiring search for a good prompt. At the same time, you can ignore it to have more control. Prompt engineering. Well, I'm able to build prompts from scratch. However, I won't do it as it is too time consuming. Instead, I'll use lexica.art as a starting point and polish an existing prompt in my way. The first thing I have in mind is those lifelike robots associated with AI. I will search for a cyborg made of flowers to find something creative. And then I just scroll down till finding something solid and unusual. You shouldn't try to find an awesome variant immediately. The concept here is to switch from one publication to another by exploring the style button. So here is definitely not my favorite but I like the general vibe and quality of shapes and colors so I will switch to recommendations and search further. Another key thing is to check prompt quality with various seeds. This time we see nice results once only. But here we have a really good prompt, all samples have the same quality. So I'll copy paste it and adjust the prompt to try with our model. When wait for a little bit and yeah, here is my result, very sweet. Then we can switch to something more pop. The new Avatar movie will come soon. Let's search for Avatar style now. Well, I like this one. However, I don't really like that it is an Avatar anime character while I have a famous blockbuster in mind. I will delete this part and remove the repetitions in the description. There is also no information about the background so I will add setting specifics. It is the evening already and these are results I got. I can log out for now and return the next day to have more fun with my model. I can also go through this process again with my favorite toy or another colleague following the same principles.